Good morning, everyone. This is Kathy Tarcioni from The Dog Connection Show. I want to thank you for coming on on a Saturday to watch a special edition of uh, The Dog Connection. Today, we're going to talk about Bark House. And let me just tell you a little bit about what this will be about. You know, I've spent over 58 years of my life supporting animal rights and seeking a solution to eliminating unnecessary euthanasia. And after all this time, I I am proud to say I'm part of a team that I believe has designed and implemented a solid solution to solving over uh, pet overpopulation. Now, this may be a breakthrough system that can be utilized in many other areas where pet adoptions are low or almost non-existent. But the question is, so what do you do when there are literally no adoptions being made Yet there are uh, in an area that is a major problem and there is a major problem with uh, backyard breeding. Uh, a crisis that results in euthanasia because of lack of shelter space and frankly, quite frankly, irresponsible pet owners who just won't spay or neuter their pets. Now, transferring a, a, to a rescue or a foster is one solution, and many shelters and rescues are transporting animals. But the perfect solution is what we call rescue by relocation. That is what Bark House is. Not a physical shelter or a rescue, Bark House provides the ideal solution to uh, save these animals and bring them to their forever homes where they can live out their lives, you know, surrounded by the people who love them and will bring them into their family with open arms. Isn't that what we really want for these fur babies? But the question is, how do you choose the right receivers for these transports? We don't want to be transporting animals to another shelter or rescue, just duplicating the problem and burdening them with the same issues. There is an organization called Pet, uh, the Best Friends Animal uh, Society, and thanks to this organization, they have assisted in implementing some pretty fantastic programs to help shelters and, and rescues with not only spay neuter, microchipping, comprehensive foster programs, and adoptions to clear out their shelters while reducing pet uh, overpopulation and of course euthanasia. So what this progressive approach, especially to spay and neuter, has done is truly that, empty the shelters. So bravo. The paradigm shift now is those areas where they no longer have an overpopulation issue are in a position to take in healthy animals for adoption. That's what Bark House's system falls into place. This is ideal for us to all work together. So let's put our egos aside and look at the real prize, which is finding a place for those animals who currently need a home rather than euthanizing them. So now I'd like to show you a video that, that we created that shows how Bark House stepped up to the plate at, at the last minute notice, used their system to help a local shelter when the crisis occurred uh, when a crisis occurred due to COVID. Now, what we're going to show you is a video, and then after that, I'm going to go over a presentation that I created. It's, it's pre-recorded, so bear with me on that. And then after that, we'll do some question and answers. So let me go ahead and share this video with you. Uh, there we go.
Who's got our stuff? All right, let's have some. Thank you so much. Oh, we got it. We got it. Oh, is this crate ready to go, Coco? Uh, that, yeah, that. Yeah. So what we're seeing here is the load up happening. We've got uh, still a few crates left to go, but they're, you know, most of which are getting onto the airplane now. And these guys are going to be going to uh, Portland, Oregon, where they'll be meeting Oregon Dog Rescue and Fur Friends. And we're really excited to once again be working with them. So you can see everything happening. And we've got help from Doniana County ACO. We've got some really, really great things happening. We're excited about the partnership that we've got with the county, with South Arrow, who came here from Albuquerque to help us with our flight. And they'll be flying into Portland, Oregon, getting the animals there this evening. And so uh, chief pilot today is uh, Jake South with South Arrow. And uh, this is his aircraft here. I'll get a good shot for everybody to see the, the aircraft. All right, well, this is the aircraft holding almost 70 of our animals here, getting ready to go to Oregon. Uh, they're going to be reaching Portland, Oregon by this evening at dinner time, and it's uh, going to be going to Oregon Dog Rescue and Fur Friends there in Portland. They are getting ready to ignite the engines now and get them going, and we should have liftoff here in the next couple minutes. So uh, we're getting ready to bid these babies goodbye, and we're uh, going to see them off to better lives, and we're, we're very, very excited about that. Got a team of people ready to watch liftoff, and bid these guys farewell and uh, everybody who's tuning in thank you so much for your support thank you for everything that you gave whether it was crates blankets donations everything that the community did to make this happen is just incredible it was a, a big time community effort major thanks to Doniana County major thanks to uh, Vic and Terry Polis for you know contributing what they have and here we go engines are starting we're gonna see the prop in the front getting ready to go and these babies are on their way to Oregon we are real excited So now that is an overview of how the, what the system looks like when it's into place. But what you don't know is what really happened behind the scenes. So now I want to give you an overview of what Bark House is all about and how their system, how their system works. And I see Ron is here. Hey, Ron, good morning. Thanks for, thanks for tuning in. And anybody, if you'd like to comment, that would be great. We'll have questions and answers afterwards. Now this is a, a recorded and I, I realized that it's like 15 minutes, but it's going to give the overview. So stay with me, folks, and, and let's watch this together. And then afterwards, well, I got to get in here now, do this, do this, do this. Okay, and let me share this. And let's go. Welcome to All About Bark House. This is Kathy Tarchioni, and I want to talk to you today about a really wonderful program that I've been having the honor to participate in. Bark House is an organization that is in the New Mexico area, and they've come up with one of the most unique solutions to pet overpopulation. So today I'm going to go over what is it that Bark House is doing. But first let me go into what their strategic vision is. And these are the topics that we'll be covering. The company, the success formula, balancing supply and demand, where they're headed, the Barkhouse hub, transport, how each other are helping the partnerships and things like that. So let's get into the actual nitty gritty. Now the vision of the 
Barkhouse team is there to provide a statewide solution for pet overpopulation benefiting all at-risk communities in New Mexico. Now their solution includes an uh, integrated relocation service of air and ground transportation for animals in danger of being euthanized in the overcrowded, underfunded New Mexico shelter system. Now on the right here you'll see Kelly Barker. Kelly is the founder of Barkhouse and she has been working uh, tirelessly for the last five years and I'm very proud to be part of Kelly's team. So okay the magic of the solution it includes that adoptable pets surrendered via their transport hub where they get them ready for a successful outcome to a high quality receivers where adopters are waiting. So what does that really mean? What is the success formula here? If you've ever heard of transport, animal transport, you may not have heard of it in the way that we're going to explain it now. So since 2015, Bark House, which was formerly known as Uncaged Paws, it's a 5013C nonprofit organization that was success, has successfully transported over 4,800 New Mexico dogs and cats to verified quality receivers in the Northwest states, where pets are in demand for adoption which means that some dogs that have been scheduled to be euthanized in shelters, Barkhouse comes along and pulls those dogs. So generally, the transported pets have 20 plus applications in the locations that they're going to and are adopted with, within five days of the transport. So now we want to look at where, where is this supply and demand? What really happens? Uh, in Dona Ana County in New Mexico, which is the second largest county, it's uh, entered into a relationship with Barkhouse and they're providing their court hold facility as a transport hub for holding and staging the animals for outbound transport. And as a part of this relationship, a spay neuter facility is going to commence operating. The service Services will be subsidized through the receipts of the Senate Bill 57, which is a pet food registration fees, and communities who opt into the network will receive additional discounted service fees and access to their residents. The mission is capping pet population through proactive sterilization and minimizing euthaniza euthanization of healthy surplus animals that will be transported out of New Mexico, thereby saving like lives and financial resources to communities. So where, where is Barkhouse headed? The humane solutions for the pet overpopulation is by bringing all New Mexico communities together to save lives. And this is the first time it's ever being done. So currently, just let me explain about New Mexico. It has 25% uh, of the population is living in poverty. And most of the communities have a, a high stray or a disregarded pet population and shelters which are actually warehouses as opposed to to um, shelters, unfortunately, for lack of a, a, the adoption demand. People in the area don't feel that they can support the adoption, so the shelters become overcrowded, and unfortunately, many times the animals are euthanized. So the Bark House model establishes a member-based community program for New Mexico. And each invited community is given the opportunity through an annual membership to be part of the solution to pet overpopulation. As a member of the Bark House New Mexico Coalition, these communities are granted the opportunity to submit their unwanted but adaptable animals to the transport hub where they will transfer them to locations where they will be adapted to loving homes rather than utilizing taxpayer dollars for euthanasia as a solution. So now let's look at the actual Bark House hub. Uh, this is, I'm, I'm actually, I'm going to show you here. It's actually going to start with the Barkhouse Healthy Pets Intake Standards. Now, Barkhouse has standards that they have regarding the uh, pets that they, or the dogs that they bring in. What does that mean? That means in order to qualify to go to a rescue, 
these dogs have to be healthy, they have to be socialized, and they have to uh, be, um, uh, excuse me, they have to be spayed or neutered. Once they meet the criteria, they are then accepted and they get the bark house seal of approval to be able to go to the rescue. In between there, we have the situation, especially in all of New Mexico, but I think just about in every area imaginable, we have this last litter program. And how this fits in is this way. The last litter is really, if you think about a shelter, the shelter will bring in pregnant moms. And unfortunately, here's what they do, folks. The pregnant moms are um, aborted. The, the babies are aborted. Unfortunately, the way they do it is not something that we really like to know about. But what Barkhouse does, because they believe in quality of life and they do believe that pregnant moms do have a right to have their babies, they bring in these last litters into the hub facility where they are taken care of, they are fed properly, they're vaccinated, and they are, are getting ready to go for transport. Now, why is this important? Because many parts of, of the United States are in desperate need of puppies. So rather than euthanize the puppies, we feel it's so much better to get them into loving and caring homes. But in order to do that, we put this program into place. There must be a seal of approval. If the mother is heartworm positive or if there's some issues and the mother is not able to uh, go with the puppies or the puppies are not able to go with the mom, we will hold them back. But the ultimate goal is that all animals that are coming from Bark House will be spayed and neutered, vaccinated, microchipped, and uh, they get transport approval. So then they go into the transport hub, which is the, the building that they're using right now with Dona Anna County, and that's called uh, the, um, uh, the Griggs building. So when we bring them into that building, what we do is we do what's called a reset. Many of the dogs that come in from the shelter or from uh, because they've been abandoned, when they come in, they're absolutely petrified. They are scared to death. They're not socialized. They don't understand why they're in the shelter. They, they've just they become resource aggressive and they do some terrible things that sometimes we'll deem them is not adoptable. We want to take those county animals and bring them into Griggs and where we do a reset, we put them on a balanced, highly nutritious food program so that they will reset them and help them psychologically balance. Then we get them involved in socializing. We do that through volunteers and through fosters. They get exercise and then at that same time we're now planning for them to be transported. And now where did the transport programs come in? The transport programs come in not only through a proprietary software so that we can manage all of this, but we need to know who the receivers are going to be and who are the receivers. They are different organizations. Some of them are foster home rescues and some of them are actual rescues who have gone and deemed that these dogs are adoptable in their area. So what they do is they tag these dogs that we have at Griggs and they say, okay, we want to take this dog. And then that dog is actually promised to that particular foster where we know they're going to get a, a really good home. Now there's two different ways that we trans transport and that is either through um, ground or through air, air transport. And I keep saying we at this point because I do want to mention that uh, I personally have gotten involved in working directly with the Bark House. So I'm part of the team too. <laughs> okay, so then once they get to the receivers, then um, the receivers, whether it be ground transport or air transport, it's almost like one of those things where, where it's, oh gosh, I get so excited when I, when I see a, a dog that's taken their forever flight on a, a, a plane or in a, in a vehicle. 
So once that is there, then they end up at the rescue. So what is this over here about the coalition? This is where we are bringing the rest of the community together. And this is an unusual thing because this has not been done in any other area. With this coalition, what we mean by that is we bring in the eight different communities and we say to them, here's a yearly membership that will allow you that includes the low cost spay neuter, for your community, uh, reduced vaccinations and microchips, and reduced transport fees, and uh, get pr proprietary approval. This whole system with this Barkhouse Hub is proven, and I'm not saying that we're going to be doing it, we are doing it. The only thing that is missing from this program is the coalition, and that's where we're going right now. Everything else is in place. So let's look at what this entails. Now the transport program, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail with this, but I'm just going to say that right now Barkhouse has been working with uh, a number of different aviation schools so that they can transport the dogs. We're looking to, we have uh, some, Doug is my co-pilot, we have pet rescue pilots, we've got uh, shuttle planes, we've got a community outreach transport program, and uh, of course the, the software. So now, how are we helping? So as I said before, we partnered with the Doniana County to bring unity plus quality management and solutions for pet overpopulation. So here's an overview of exactly what Barkhouse is offering. High quality standards, professional staffing, on-staff veterinarian, low-cost bay neuter, microchip and vaccinations, a master microchip registry, the last litter program. We have a fabulous volunteer and foster network, the hub facility at Griggs and air and ground transport, the software, fundraising capabilities and community awareness programs. All of this is part of what Barkhouse offers. And obviously, we want to, you, you want to know how you can help. Well, you can become an integral part of the community effort. You can volunteer. Right now, the volunteers that are needed are ones that don't, we don't have a, a, a rescue facility where you're going to go and take the dogs out and um, uh, uh, clean them and clean the cages and that. That's not what we're asking you to do. We're asking you to come and walk them. In addition to that, we need volunteers that are interested in doing marketing and social media and getting the word out and helping us with the community resources and the community outreach. In addition, you can foster. You can do that. If, you, if you've never had a dog before or you want one, you can certainly take in a foster into your home and know that the foster is only temporary because it's usually anywhere from two to four weeks before bar cows transport these dogs out. So you're not talking a long term. It's not a year's worth. Okay, then you can also become a partner resource. Maybe you have a business that you can offer to be partners with, with Barkhouse. That would be great too. And social media sharing, we would love that. We'd love for you to be able to get involved in sharing on social media. So whether it's Facebook or Twitter or um, Instagram or Pinterest or any of those, please help us there. And then of course, direct marketing. If you have marketing skills and PR skills, we would love to have you be part of this. And then of course, eventually we see ourselves having our own, <clears throat> our own plane. And fundraising efforts are also important. And then any community partnerships that we can get involved with, that's how you can help. So now we can't do it alone. As I said before, we've got a number of receiving organizations. We've got pi pi national pilot training schools. We've got um, local animal rescues, and then the official, the state, city, and county officials and organizations. We can't do it alone. We need help. And these are marketing channels. Of course, we're on social media. We do live broadcasting, which is called Barkhouse Live. We've got partners. So we're pretty well situated in the social media community and our marketing. Our social media sites are Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, and also Pinterest. And now we're here. We're here to help you and we're here to let you know that 
we need your help and we love this program. So let's let this inspire us. Our solutions start at home. And we want to brand this as New Mexico Cares, and that's a Barkhouse Progressive Initiative. So on your to-do list, when next time you're doing things, do hashtag NM Cares for New Mexico Cares. And for your to-do list, one thing, support Barkhouse in any way you can, and two, inspire others to help New Mexico animals in need. So that's it for the program, and thank you so much for watching, folks. Okay, so I hope that gives you a good overview of what Barkhouse is doing. And if you have any questions, please ask them now. If you would like to have a PDF format of this presentation sent to you, especially if you're an organization that's a rescue and you want to partner with us, which we really, really would love, uh, I sent it in the comments, let me know, and I will go ahead and uh, send you a copy. Uh, if you're not a friend of mine, I understand that. So we'll private message and we'll exchange email addresses. Now, the, one of the things that I know for sure that is an issue for many people is um, how do you go ahead and get involved with something like this? Uh, and, and am I going to have to commit for a long period of time? No, you really don't. You don't. If, anything that you can do would be great. And I just want to give you a look at uh, Coco Dean is the executive director and his wife, uh, Melissa, and he, they actually broadcast and produce the Bark House Live uh, show. And Melissa is and, and Coco are photographers, and they are the ones that do all of the footage and the photography for anything to do with Bark House. And this is a picture of a puppy. And take a look at this. Take a look at that face and look at the hands that are holding it. These are people in the community that see the need and really want to do whatever they can to help these precious fur babies lives. So we need help with something like that. And let, let me just say that you want to know where your donations go? Here's where they go. They go to it for intake, for, uh, for the Bark House standards assessment, for testing, for transport approval, for vaccination and microchipping, for the foster homes. The foster homes need food, they need bedding, they need medical care. For the holding facility, the staff that we have to have to have people uh, there to take care of the, the um, dogs, for their food, for their bedding, for toys, for supplies, and I said vet care. They need a health service certificate if they're going to be transferred over state. And then, of course, the, the cost of the transport planning and the coordination and the community awareness and the education and the receiver selection and, of course, the actual ground uh, transport. Most of the air transport, as a matter of fact, I'm not most of it, but all of the air transport is um, something that we work with on a, on a high level every single day so that we can bring in new partners. And let me see here, I got, uh, oh, Elizabeth Wolf. Elizabeth says, hi, Kathy, awesome work. I work for Animal Protection of New Mexico. Does Bark House work only in Dona Ana County? Absolutely not. We are going into all of the communities. So Elizabeth, let's, let's talk and let's see. Good morning, good morning, Dale. Okay, anybody else have questions? Any questions? So that is really it for today. I don't have any other things, but just take a look at one of the things that a dog does. This is a picture that I posted of an autistic child. Their, their parents, his parents, went and adopted this dog from a shelter. And look at what this dog is doing to bring comfort to this boy. It changed his entire world. Dogs are miracles. They can do so many things to help us. And if we dig deep into our hearts and we know that dogs are there to bring us comfort, to bring us happiness, to bring us joy, and to be there during all of our difficult times, then I think we've got a special thing going on, don't we? Okay, everyone, I want to thank you for taking the time during this this Saturday. And if you can hear that, I'm at the Bark House, actually, and you can hear the dogs barking in the background. That's my Charlie, my 14-year-old Charlie. So, okay, guys, 
Thank you so much. And I will see you next Thursday on our regular show. Bye.